This is going to be explaining double replacement reaction. In a double replacement reaction, we'll have two sets of compounds that are adding together that will yield to two different sets of compounds. This is an example of a double replacement reaction, because as you can see, the K then switches partners, because on the left side it starts with CO3 and ends with Cl, and on this side, the BA starts with Cl, and now on this side, it ends with CO3. We're going to do a few examples on how to balance double replacement reactions. So what we want to do is we want to go through each element we have. So we have an Fe, Cl, Na, and an OH. Then we want to figure out how many of each element we have on both sides of the equation. So on the left side of the equation, we only have one Fe. Then on the right side, we also have one. So that's easy since it's already balanced. On the left side, we have three Cl's, and on the right side, we only have one. On the left side, we have one Na, and on the right side, we also have one. Well, on the left side, we have one OH, and then on the right side, we have three OHs. First, we're going to balance Cl. So on the left side, we have three of them, and on the right side, we have one. So we're going to take a three in front of NaCl, so this turns in to three, but that three also affects the Na, so we're going to add a three right here as well. So now, that messes with the Na balance. So on the left side, we also want that to be a three, so we're going to add a three in front as well and that'll be 3, and now Na is balanced. That 3 also applies to the OH, so that turns into a 3, and now the OH is balanced. And now we have a completed balanced equation. In this next one, we're going to set it up the same way we did in the last one. So we have A, G, N, O, 3, whoops, M, G, and C, L. Again, we're going to figure out how many we have on each side. So on the left side we have 1 Ag, on the right we also have 1. On the left side we have 1 NO3, and on the right side we have 2. On the left side we have 1 Mg, on the right side we have 1. On the left side we have 2 Cl, and on the right side we have 1. So again, we're going to play with the first one that's unbalanced, which is NO3. So on the left side, we're going to add a 2 to balance that one, but that also applies to the Ag. So now AG has 2. So now we're going to try and balance the AG. So we'll add a 2 in front of there. So that balances that one out. But the 2 also applies to the CL. So now the CL has 2. And then MG is already balanced. And now we have another completed balanced equation. For this last one, again, we're going to set it up the same way. So we'll have C, O, and H. We'll figure out how many we have on each side. On the left side we have 1C, and on the right side we have 6. On the left side we have 3 O's, and then on the right side we have 8. Then on the left side we have 2 H's, then on the right side we have 12. First we'll play with the first unbalanced equation, and we'll have, we'll add a 6. So now that turns into a 6, but that also messes with the O. So now on this side, we'll have seven O's, and that's for that one. Then we'll now play with the H's, just because they're even numbers and easier to do. So on the left side, we have two, and we need to get it to 12, so we'll add a six right here. So then that balances out, oops, that should be a 12. So then that balances out the hydrogens. And now that 6 also applies to the O, so this will give you 12. Then we also added another 6, so that will be 18. And then on the right side, we have 6 right here and another 2, so that will give us 8. So we're going to add a 6 right in front of there, and that multiplies to 12, and then that will be 6. So then 6 plus 12 is 18. And we have, yet again, another balanced equation. Just to make things easier, we're going to start with the most recent equation we balanced. So we're going to have six C's. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, 
6. And then we're going to have 6 O2s, and O2 means they're diatomic, so they'll stick together with the Cs. So we'll keep adding those. Then we also have 6 H2Os. So we'll start with our O's again, and since it's not diatomic this time, we'll just have six separate ones. And then since we have diatomic H's, we'll have two connected onto each. And then we'll go into our after stage. This one is just going to be really big because they have lots of numbers. So there will be six C's. 12 H's, 6 O's, so that's one big blob, and then we have 6 O2's, and since these are diatomic, we'll have them mushed together. five, six of those, and that's how you show it in a diagram. Next we're going to talk about how you predict products. So in this one we're going to predict what the ending equation will be. So what you first want to do when it comes to predicting products, you want to figure out the charge of each element. So PB we have is positive 2, then F is negative 1, which is what gives us the 2 after the fluorine. Then in the next equation, we have a positive 1, and then chlorine is a negative 1, which shows why it doesn't have a number after it. So what we always do is we'll take the first element of the first equation and the second element of the second equation and put them together. So it'll be P, B, C, L because the positives always have to go with the negatives. And since the charge of the P, B is plus 2, we'll need 2 of chlorines to even that out. So we'll add a 2 behind that to make it diatomic. Then our next equation will be the two remaining ones, which is fluorine and hydrogen. And the positive one always goes first, so it'll be hydrogen and then fluorine. So now we have to balance it, so we'll erase that mess. And we're going to do the same process that we did when I balanced them earlier. So on each side we have one PB, then we have two on two fluorines on the left side and one on the right. So we'll add a 2 in front of here. That also affects the H, so we'll add a 2 in front of here. So I'll have two H's on the left, two H's on the right. That also applies to the chlorines, so that'll be two chlorines and then two chlorines on the right side. And we have another balanced equation. We're going to predict another product of this one. So we need to find the charge of each element. Mg is 2 plus, and then fluorine is a negative 1, which also gives us the 2 behind it to even them out. Then lithium is plus 1, and then sulfur is negative 2, which is what gives us the 2 here to balance them out. So again, we're going to take the first element of the first equation and the second element of the second equation, put those together, so it'll be MgS, and since they have the same charge, but I mean like positive and negative, since they're the same, that equals them out, so we don't need any numbers behind them. And then again, we're going to take the second element of the first equation and the first element of the second equation and put those together. Since the positive one goes first, it'll be L, I, F. And then there will be no numbers behind them since, again, they have the same ones. Now we have to balance it out again. So we'll get rid of this. 
just to, to make it easier to see. So on the left side we have 1 mg, and on the right side we have 1, so it's already balanced. And then on the left side we have 2 fluorines, so we'll need to add a 2 in front of here. That also applies to the lithium. So now we have 1 mg on both sides. We have 2 fluorines on both sides. We have 2 lithium on both sides. And then sulfur, we have 1 on both sides. And again, we have another balanced equation. So that is all about how to figure out double replacement problems and to predict what their products will be.